All right, so welcome to part two of the video on nonlinear systems. Um, we're going to talk about substitution now. Basically, it just gives you an alternative method to do this um, because, like I said, sometimes elimination isn't going to work. Even if it's your favorite, there's going to be times you're like, oh, I can't eliminate because if X is squared in one and not in the other and Y is squared in one and not in the other, then how are you going to eliminate them because you don't have anything to subtract to get rid of all the parts. Like right here, I could subtract to try to get rid of the X's and I could make the X's line up, but the X squareds wouldn't go away. So we need another method is what it boils down to. And if you ask the old bald guy across the hall, he's like, just teach substitution because it always works. Well, it does, he's right. But it's good to have a variety of options available to you in case you like one better. So here we go. Notice the difference here, and it wouldn't take much to fix this, but the difference here is that this one is solved for y, this one is not. Okay, big deal, I subtract x and the bottom one's solved for y. But because it is not ready, not set up to be eliminated, another method might be appropriate here. The way substitution works, and you might remember this from before, I literally solve either the first or the second equation for x or y, you have options. Either the first one or the second one, either x or y. The top one's already solved for y. So once I get to that point, I literally substitute whatever this is in place of y down here. So x squared minus 6x plus 9 is going to replace y down here. So that makes my second equation, x squared minus 6x plus 9, instead of y, we've replaced it now, plus x equals 5. So I substitute, just like substitution works in any problem in math, you replace something with something else that's equivalent. So I've replaced the y with x squared minus 6x plus 9. And now just like we did with elimination, I've got an equation with only one variable left. It's only got x. The y's are gone again. So however I get there, elimination or substitution, I now have an equation with just x in it so we can solve it. So I notice that these are like terms, so I'm going to combine them. And I know that I have to have a ZPP going on, so I'm going to subtract 5 over as well. So I now have x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0, because I combined these and moved the 5 over. And now we're ready to do what we've done 150 times, right? Find factors of 4 that add to negative 5. So x minus 4 and x minus 1. So that means when I use the zero product property, x is 4 or x is 1. So, just like with elimination, I find a way to get an equation with only one variable in it. I either eliminate the y's or I substitute to replace the y's, okay? Once I get it um, down to one variable, I solve what I have. Clean it up, get it set to zero, factor ZPP. Just like elimination though, this is not our final answer. Remember, we're looking for the point or points of intersection. So I gotta plug these back in. So I'm gonna plug them into the bottom one this time, because again, there's less places to plug it in. So y plus x equals five is first gonna become, if I plug four in, y plus four equals five. Subtract four, and that means y is equal to one. So my very first ordered pair is four, one. And then if x is one, it becomes y plus one equals five. I subtract one, and I get y is equal to four. So my second ordered pair is one, four. So that means we got four, one, and one, four. Complete coincidence. That does not always happen with substitution. Just a coincidence. Anyway, so there's our first example. Let's look at our second example of substitution. And again, pause the video anytime you need to, really. Um, this one, you might be sitting there thinking, yeah, but that one looks like it's ready to be eliminated. Fine. But we want to do another example of substitution because we've already done two examples of elimination, we want to do a second example of substitution. So y equals x squared minus 11x minus 36, and y equals negative 12x plus 36 are our two equations. And let's say you're in college algebra and the professor has said use substitution. So you don't have a choice, because if you don't follow directions, can they take points off? Yeah. Good news, they're both already solved for y, so I just pick one of them and plug it in the other spot. So let's say I'm going to substitute this down here. So that's going to become instead of y equals x squared minus 11x minus 36 equals, okay, I've replaced the y here, negative 12x 
plus 36. So either way, I substitute, take whatever the y is and replace it with x squared minus 11x minus 36. Now that we're here, again, I've got one variable, only x. So do what we do. Get them all together on one side. Right? Get it set to zero. And then use the ZPP factor and use the zero prior property. x squared plus x minus 72. Once again, we play the little game. It's an easy trinomial. So I'm simply looking for factors of negative 72 that add to 1. That would be plus 9 and minus 8. Then the zero product property tells me that well, then x must be negative 9. Or x must be 8. Deepity do, right? We know we're not done. We've got to plug them back in. So let's plug them into the bottom one. y equals negative 12x plus 36. If x is negative 9, that becomes y equals negative 12 times negative 9 plus 36. So that becomes y equals 108 plus 36, which means y equals 144. So my first ordered pair is negative 9 comma 144. Holy cow, that's big. My second one, we're going to plug 8 in. So y equals negative 12 times 8 plus 36. Negative 12 times 8 is uh, negative 96 plus 36 makes that negative 60. And my second ordered pair is 8 comma negative 60. So there's two examples of elimination. Now we've done two examples of substitution. I think you probably can try one on your own. No, we got one more. How many did I do here? Well, if you don't need to keep watching, you can obviously stop the video because we've already done four examples. But I'll keep throwing more examples up here. We're at seven minutes, so I've got time to throw a couple more up here. I thought I had one for you to try on your own, but maybe I, maybe I do and I'm just not there yet. But you can try any of these on your own. Pause the video, try the problem, and then come turn it back on and watch me do it, right? So y equals 2x squared plus 3. y equals x plus 2. Let's do substitution again. That's what we were on. I'm going to substitute this down here. So I got 2x squared plus 3 equals x plus 2. All right? So now that we've got down to one variable, we're going to collect all those variables over on this side and then factor and use the ZPP. So that's equal to 0. The x doesn't have a like term over here, so we're just going to squeeze it in in descending order of power. And the 3 minus 2 makes 1, right? So this example, for the first time today, we don't have an easy trinomial. We have one where we have to mark. That's OK. We can mark. 2 times 1 is 2. Factors of 2 that add to negative 1 are what? What two numbers go here? Think about it. Factors of 2 that add to negative 1. Negative 2 and 1 is correct. So that means we're going to split our middle term to minus 2x and plus x, and then group them. Here I have a 2, oops, I forgot that's x squared there, guys. So I have a 2x in common, leaving me with x minus 1. What did I write wrong here? gentlemen that's not right did you see that negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 that is not right I made the cardinal mistake of thinking I had the right factors when I did it. but notice how that wasn't factorable that's what told me oh you little fart that doesn't work so are there factors of 2 that add to negative 1 there are not we got to use the quadratic formula here so x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Be the ever so careful. We thought we had the factors and they didn't work. But notice, again, when you, if you go back, rewind the video, where I had it grouped, 
I realize, hey, this doesn't work. These aren't gonna be the same. I can't make them the same. That means that that's not factorable. We have to use quadratic formula. So we come back and use the quadratic formula. We got one plus or minus one minus eight all over four. Ladies and gentlemen, what's gonna happen here? One plus or minus the square root of negative seven over four means we have one plus or minus the square root of seven i over four. So what does that mean? If I get imaginary answers for my x values, what does that mean? It means they don't exist, right? It means these two things will never intersect. We're looking for the point of intersection to the points of intersection, right? We were looking at this kind of scenario where I had a parabola that intersected at two points. And up until this example, they all intersected at two points. Well, guess what we have here? We just happen to have a parabola and a line that do not intersect, right? Well, that's not really what they look like, but I'm just saying that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a parabola and a line that do not intersect at all. So there's no solution. As soon as I realize my answers are imaginary, we're talking about the real world. We're talking about the real coordinate plane here. You can't have imaginary numbers on the coordinate plane. So there's no solution. Okie doke. All right, and apparently while I was teaching that example, the next one popped up on the slide, so we're up to 11 and a half minutes on here, so we'll call that a good video here, so we'll, pause, we'll stop it here. So if you have questions, I will be staying after school next week um, to help since I was absent when this lesson was taught, so let me know if you got questions. Come and see me.